Hello, everyone. My name is Greg Bem, and I'm one of the librarians at Spokane Community College. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating ChatGPT Plus, the paid version of ChatGPT, as seen in the browser user interface. Many of these features may change if you're watching this in the future. And if you only have a free account, many of these features will probably still be the same for you. So let's take a look at the interface. The top left, we have ChatGPT 4.0 of this white screen. This dropdown allows you to select the different language models through which you can use ChatGPT. ChatGPT has three currently, GPT 4.0, best for complex tasks, Mini, which was just released, faster for everyday tasks, and the legacy model, GPT 4. Another recently added feature is this bar at the bottom, which says temporary chat with a simple toggle switch and enabling it does what you might expect. Any chats that you have with ChatGPT will be temporary. They will not be saved uh, or stored to memory or any of those features. I will click on this for now for the demonstration just to show. This chat won't appear in history, use, or create memories, or be used to train our models. For safety purposes, we may keep a copy for up to 30 days. In the middle space here of this video is where you will see the chat. The bottom bar allows you to enter your prompt, which then allows you to have a conversation with the generative AI. The paperclip allows you to connect to Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, or upload a file from your computer, such as a PDF or Word document. A reminder that if you do this, don't include any sensitive information, and note that there may be copyright issues if you do upload copyrighted information. The upper right corner of the screen is essentially your account tab. Clicking on this icon will show you your plan, the GPTs you've created, and those are the customized versions of the GPT language model. It will allow you to customize ChatGPT, modify settings, and log out. On the left side of the screen, you have essentially your conversations panel. This is the history of conversations you've had with ChatGPT. Because I'm using temporary mode, I can't actively click on these at the moment. But you'll notice that you can start a new conversation with ChatGPT. You can use the image generator GPT, which was used previously on this account, which is why it's showing up. Explore GPTs that others have created to start a conversation using those GPTs or customizations. And then beneath the full conversation history. There's also a team workspace option, which will lead you to an upgrade page for ChatGPT. And you can hide the conversation sidebar by clicking on the upper left icon. Let's say we want to start a conversation with ChatGPT 4.0. I'm just going to enter in a quick prompt, create a few haiku that demonstrate the natural beauty of summer in Spokane. And then I can click on the arrow icon and you will note that it is generating. And while it is generating, there is a stop button. But of course, it was so fast that I didn't even really have a chance to stop the generation. Note that it has my prompt above. It allows me to edit my message if I wanted to resubmit the prompt. And then beneath is its answer. Its response to my prompt or haiku returned five different haiku in individual three line stanzas as haiku are written and header based um, titles in this case numerically ordered note that you can also reply when you highlight any particular part of the response and this is a relatively new feature as well allowing you to dig in deeper into specific parts of the response. There are also four icons beneath the response. Read aloud, copy if you wanted to copy the text into a new space or the prompt bar, regenerate if you weren't quite happy with this 
current response. And you can change the model to review how a different model would interact with your prompt. That is the basic overview of the ChatGPT interface without diving into the GPTs or other aspects and more advanced features of ChatGPT. Hope you enjoyed watching this brief tutorial. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And if you need help, reach out to the librarians at Spokane Community College. Thanks for watching.